have some good to say, Marilyn. You know, Satan's always messing up when you got someone <laughs> when you're trying to do something good. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Mm-hmm. Just, just uh, all of a sudden, out of the blue, for no reason, uh, get switched. Yeah. It ain't out of the blue though. No, and we but we got the victory mm -hmm. still. Yep, amen to that. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so I got a message from Kim King. Larry's left elbow popped hard, which brought him to his knees. He then became unresponsive. He's coherent now and better now, but I'm taking him to urgent care. Please pray for him. So it's not that he, he had an incident this morning. So we're gonna, we will lift him up in prayer. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm sorry again about the lateness uh, of getting started. Um, but again, we had some technical issues this morning. And so, welcome. Welcome this morning. I am so glad that you all are here. And we are going to begin with our invocation. And so I am going to pray for us this morning. If you would all Marilyn, bow with me may, for a moment of prayer. Marilyn, yeah. before you pray, <clears throat> I had an issue this morning. I fell and hit my elbow, and it made a yeah, really... Kim, uh, Kim texted Kim text yeah. me. It, yeah. We'll get to go to urgent care, but uh, it made a really loud pop. And I don't know if it's dislocated or what, but I'm on my way to urgent care, but I wanted to let y'all know. Please. Okay. Pray. I will. Right. Thank you. We'll pray for you. All right. God bless. All right. You too. Bye Take bye. care. Thanks. All right. Would everybody please mute? Let's bow. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day. God, we just lift up your name and we give you praise because you are our God our God who is sovereign, our God who is in control, our God who is awesome and magnificent, you are our God. And we just, we just bow to you this morning, God. God, we love you and we thank you for all the things that you've done in our lives, even just today, even just waking us up this morning and, and starting us to do the things that we do in order to get ready for this service today. Lord God, we ask God that you would forgive us of our sin. Lord God, that you would, you would wipe away anything that would keep us from hearing you and from hearing your word today. Lord, we just uh, know God that you are our savior, that you are the one who does everything in our lives, that nothing happens by coincidence. Lord, you know God that you have a message for your people today. And God, I thank you for that message and I pray that every heart be opened, every heart be uh, fertile to hear your word, God, and to really take that in and God, to learn from it. And so God, we just uh, ask God that you would bless Larry, God, as he's on his way to urgent care. We ask God that you would touch his body, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we just pray, God, that, um, that you would just be with him. We know, God, that you are a healer. God, that there's nothing that you cannot do for us. And so, God, we are praying for that. 
this morning in the name of Jesus, that you would keep both him and Kim safe, God, on their way to see a physician. Lord God, we ask God that your Holy Spirit, God would just pour out his anointing on each one of us, just on this virtual service today, Lord God. We ask God that you would um, just be present with us, Heavenly Father. We know God that you are already present, that you already live in us, but we're asking God for a special anointing today, a special pouring out today, a special understanding today, a special blessing today. Heavenly Father, we ask God that you would that you would touch our country, that you would touch our communities, God, that you would touch our cities, Heavenly Father. God, that you would pray for our leaders today, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we know, God, that they need you. I don't know if they know that they need you, but we know that they need you. And so, God, we're just praying for that this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, God, for our troops everywhere, Heavenly Father, that you would keep them safe in the midst of danger zones. And so, God, I just thank you, God, for the privilege of being able to speak today, to speak to your people today. I just pray, God, that you would pour out your love on each one of us today. Let us know, God, that you really love us and that you really do care and that you really do walk with us and talk with us and speak to us. And Lord, I'm praying this morning that you would speak to us in the name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all. Let everyone say amen and amen. All right, our updates for today. We have Wednesday night Bible study. I believe that we are starting on, on chapter four of Hebrews. If you would like to join us, please get in touch with Larry King. Somebody has, or somebody is not muted. Please mute yourselves. Wednesday night Bible studies at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Prayer requests, please place your prayer request in the chat window. Do that at any time during the service, and we will pray for you after the sermon. Also, don't forget your tithes and offerings. If you're having trouble getting into the website, please contact uh, Derek Hill down here. His number is down here, and he can help you get in, or I can even try to help you get into the website. But please don't forget your tithes and offerings at www.antioch.life, that's L-I-F, is in Frank, E slash donate. You have your contact information there. I don't know if I have my other updates that request. Do you have another page? Yes. Okay, so I just want to remind everybody that Easter is coming up. Palm Sunday will be next Sunday, March 28th, and Resurrection Sunday is Sunday, April 4th, 2021. We are also planning a church fellowship sometime this spring when it gets a little bit warmer, so we don't have a date yet, but we, but we are planning something. The other thing for today is I need for you to have your Bibles ready because I would like for you to read along with me Psalm 106. That's Psalm 106. So if you have your Bibles, please open it to Psalm 106. Our song this morning is uh, by Nathan's, Nathan Hutchins. I, I'm sorry, Norman Hutchins. Norman Hutchins from his CD, Spontaneous Praise. And it's called, This is the Day, because we know that this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in this day. And so, this is the day. Our God is worthy, worthy of all the praise, worthy of all the glory, and worthy of all the honor. He's worthy. This is the day the Lord has made and you ought to rejoice and be glad in it because God woke you up this morning. Amen? Amen.
All right, we're going to get started with our sermon. Let's go. Psalm 106. I'm calling this sermon today, The Hebrew Chronicles, Part 1. The Hebrew Chronicles, Part 1. So um, we're going to have up on the screen Psalm 106, verses 1 through 6, and then 47 and 48. But I am going to read Psalm 106, verses 1 through 23. Verses 1 through, through 23, I think that they are important in your hearing. And then we're going to do something a little bit different with the sermon today. So the psalm starts out like this. It says, give thanks. First of all, it says, praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise. Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones that I may share in the joy of your nation and join in your inheritance in giving praise. We have sinned even as our ancestors did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses and they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea and dried it up and it dried up. He led them through the depths as Though as through a desert, he saved them from the hand of the foe, from the hand of the enemy, he redeemed them. The waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. Then they believed in his promises and sang his praise. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his plan to unfold. In the desert, they gave in to their craving. In the wilderness, they put God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease among them. In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron who was consecrated to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It buried the company of Abiram. Fire blazed among their followers. A flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb, they made a calf. We're talking about the Israelites now and worshiped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glorious God for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in the land of Ham, which is Egypt as well, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them. Had Moses not, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. I read in your hearing Psalm 106, verses 1 through 23. Let's pray. 
gracious heavenly father we come again before you god god just asking you to bless the hearers of your word lord god that we might hide it deeply in our hearts and that we might hear the message today lord i thank you for this message today that the, the chronicles of the hebrew people and i and i i pray god that you would help me god then to relate that to our lives today. I thank you, God, again, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Psalm 106, as you all know, we've talked about this before, the book of Psalms is divided into five books. Even though there are 150 Psalms, they are divided into five. Hebrew, um, Psalm 106 is the last book in book four of the Psalms. In book four, from verses 90 through 106, they highlight God as over all, as eternal, and everything will be made right. Everything will come just as God said it would because God is sovereign and God keeps his promises. He keeps his covenants and we can rest assured in that fact that things will be made right one day. In verse six, as we read, which is the last verse on this screen. It says, we have sinned. Even as our ancestors did, we have done wrong and acted wickedly. Can you uh, turn the page to verses 47 and 48 for me? Yes. And so here it says, save us, Lord, our God and gather us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. And what does that mean? Save your people, gather us from wickedness, basically is what this is saying. And then in 48, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting and let all the people say amen and praise the Lord. You can go back to the next slide. So it says in verse six that we've, we've sinned and we have done wrong and acted wickedly. And the author then remembers the story of Israel and the current state of affairs in which this was written. It brings to mind the sin of God's people back then, way back then in Moses' time and now. So the Psalm then, becomes a reminder overall of the greatness of our God. The Lord is mighty in spite of who we are and his miracles are numerous. I think a lot of times people think they're the mighty ones, but they are not mighty. The Lord is the one who is mighty and his miracles are numerous. Have you ever stopped to think about all the miracles that God has done, not only in the scriptures, but the miracles he's done in each and every life listening to this sermon today. The more we think about his miracles in scripture, the more we appreciate the miracles he has done for us individually. So I want you to take a few seconds and I want you to think about what is what God has done for you or for your family individually. Think about just your own birth, just being here, just God letting you be here and, and grow to this age. I want you to think about the character development that he has brought about in you. Loving friends and family. 
the specific guidance God has given you, given us. Think about his healing. Think about salvation. Think about the fact that you have a savior. Think about how he has ordered your life, how he is provider, how he is defender, how he is deliverer. Now take another few seconds and think back to a difficult time in your life when it seemed like God not only did, didn't come through, he did not come through, but things got worse. You ever been there? It seemed like no matter what you did, no matter how hard you prayed, you seemed to hit another brick wall. Or you really needed something to happen and you started to get discouraged and complain that everyone seems to get blessed except you. You got something in your mind? You wouldn't be unlike the psalmist in his first example of Israel's unbelief because they couldn't see what God was doing. And so what we're going to do today is we need to tell the story again. We need to be reminded of the story of Exodus, of God's deliverance of his people from Egypt. In Exodus, in the fifth chapter, after Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, they said to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. Let my people go so that they may hold a festival to me in the wilderness. And what that means is let my people go so they can come and worship me in the wilderness so that they can gather and basically have church. Pharaoh said to them, who is, who is the Lord? Who is this Lord that I should obey him? and let Israel go. I don't know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. Mm, interesting. Then they said, the God of Israel, Moses and Aaron, has met with us. Please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, or he may strike us with plagues or with the sword. But the Pharaoh continued in his, in his way and said, why are you taking people from their labor? They got work to do. Get back to your work. He said, look at the people of the land. They are now numerous and they work for me and you're stopping them from working. And that same day, the Pharaoh gave orders to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people. He said, all right, you are no longer to supply the people with straw for making these bricks. They have to get their own straw, but they have to make the same number of bricks per day. Don't reduce the quota. They're lazy. That's why they're crying out. Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make the work harder for the people so they keep working and pay no attention to lies. So they went out, of course, the slave drivers and the overseers, and they did what Pharaoh said. And they kept pressing them and pressing them, saying, complete the work required of you for each day, just as when we were bringing you straw. And the slave drivers beat the Israel, 
Israelite overseers they had appointed. Pharaoh's slave drivers beat the Israelite overseers they had appointed, demanding, why haven't you met your quota of bricks yesterday or today as before? So then the Israelite overseers went to Pharaoh and appealed to him, why are you treating your servants this way? Your servants are given no straw, yet we are told, make bricks. Your servants are beaten, but the fault is with your own people. Lazy, Pharaoh said. Lazy, that's what you are. That is why you keep saying, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Now get to work. You will not be given any straw. You have to produce your full quota of bricks. So the Israelite overseers, they knew they were in trouble when they were told you are not to reduce the number of bricks required for you each day. So when they left, when they left Pharaoh, they found Moses and Aaron waiting to meet them. And they said this, may the Lord look on you and judge you both. You have made us obnoxious to Pharaoh and his officials and have put a sword in their hand to kill us because they knew that if they didn't keep that quota going, they would be slaughtered, they would be killed. So of course, what does Moses do? Moses returns to the Lord and he says, Lord, why have you brought this trouble on your people, on this people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on this people and you have not rescued your people at all. Can anybody relate to Moses? When, can anybody relate to the fact that God did not rescue when you thought he could or should have rescued. Then the Lord said this to Moses. He told Moses, now you're gonna see what I'm gonna do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty hand, he will let them go. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out of his country. God said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself fully known to them as I did to you. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan where they resided as foreigners. Moreover, I've heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians are enslaving and I have remembered my covenant because if you remember, God chose the Israel people, Israelite people, he chose them. Just like he chooses us, he chose them to be his people, to be his representatives here on earth. So he tells Moses that, Say to the Israelites, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under that yoke of the Egyptians. I'm going to free you from being slaves to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians and I will bring you to this land. I swore with up lifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. I'm gonna give it to you as a possession because what, who? I am the Lord. 
So, of course, if you know the story and you follow the story in Exodus, Moses goes to the Israelites, but they ain't listening to him. Because you know what? When you're under a harsh time, when you're under a difficult time, when you are discouraged, you don't want to hear nobody like Moses. And they didn't want to hear Moses. So then the Lord tells Moses, go to Pharaoh. Go tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to let my people go. Let the Israelites go out of his country. But Moses said, Lord, if the Israelites won't listen to me, why would Pharaoh listen? He worse than the Israelites. Since I don't speak well anyway, he calls himself speaking with faltering lips, which means that he probably stuttered. So folks, what kindnesses, what things do we forget God has done when we are growing, going through? Because the Lord let me know today that some of us are going through. We're going through today. We're going through now. Maybe not all of us, but we are going, some of us are going through now. Look at Israel the things that God had done. He promised Abraham a people. He sent Abraham into a, into a place. Abraham didn't even know where he was going, but Abraham was faithful and went. Isaac and Jacob and Joseph, remember through the Israelites, Joseph came about and saved Israel from famine. And then when the Israelites got to Egypt and they had a more favorable Pharaoh under Joseph, they gave Israel their own land in the land of Goshen. God saved his people from destruction. So my question to you today, or to us today, what's God saved you from? What has God saved you from? Can you count the times that he has saved you? My next question to us is, what are we complaining about right now? What are you complaining about right now? Be honest. The Hebrew people could only see their labor increase. And Moses didn't understand. Even though he obeyed God, he didn't understand a God who was more than magnificent. Do you know, do we know that God is more than magnificent today? There's a scripture in Isaiah 55 that says something like this. For my thoughts, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are so much higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Do you know that God's thoughts and ways are higher than ours today? And he says this, the word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. That's all in Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. And so between the time that I spoke to you about in Exodus 5 and Exodus 13. You know, God sent the plagues. We're not going to go through those. He sent those plagues. He sent 10 of them. Finally, culminating in the plague of the firstborn, where he killed every firstborn Egyptian male in the land, except those who belong to Israel. 
And in Exodus 13, in verse 17, it says something like this. When Pharaoh let the people go, God didn't lead them on the road through the Philistine country, although it was shorter. Why? Why didn't he let them go? He said if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Now you all know what happened at the Red Sea, right? You all know that God made the sea stand up and a wind blew and dried up the sea for a moment so that all God's people could walk through on dry land. Pharaoh though, was greedy. And if I must say, he was pretty stupid. He saw that God had dried up the land for his people. And so he followed them into the, into the Red Sea. He followed them on that dry land. And what happened? You all know what happened. God made the sea come back to its bed and drowned Pharaoh's army and Pharaoh also. And so God's people escaped to the other side. Hmm. And so they camped there at the edge of the desert. And what did God do for his people at the time? By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. Can you imagine a large cloud and a, and a group of people following a cloud? And then he protected them at night with a pillar of fire behind them so that they could travel by night or by day so that they could see the pillar of fire must have been so, uh, so magnificent that they could see where they were going at night. He never left his people by day or by night. Interestingly, God's people were still terrified. Why'd you bring us to the desert, Moses? Why'd you bring us here? You brought us here to die? Were there not enough graves in Egypt to bury us? That you brought us here that we have to die in the desert? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have better, it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. So Moses said, Don't be afraid. Stand firm. And you'll see the deliverance of the Lord. How many sermons have you heard? How many? Have you heard from me or from others that says, stand, that say, stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord? He will bring you deliverance today. Just stand firm. Hmm. And as I said before, you know, during this time, when the Israel was on, when Israel was on the other side, of course, they looked up and saw the Egyptians coming. And as I said before, he stretched out his staff, made the water come back, and all Israel, all of Pharaoh's army was drowned. And God gained glory through that because the Israelites were able to see the miracle that he had done. And then if you know the story, you know what happened. 
Israel started complaining. They were intent on getting the food they had back in Egypt. They were so intent on getting that food and that water that they wanted that they became blind to what God wanted. They were more concerned about their immediate phys physical gratification that la than lasting spiritual satisfaction. So my question then to us is, are we so intent on getting what we want when we want it, that we are blind to what God wants, that we make decisions that move forward outside of God's will. In Numbers 11, we know that God gave the Hebrews manna and they complained so much about the manna. We so sick of this manna, this manna's coming out of our nose. Oh, God said quail. He said so much quail. They had to step through the quail. That's how thick the quail were when God sent the quail, but he didn't only send the quail. He also sent a wasting disease to the people as well for complaining and complaining and complaining and complaining. And then it starts again with complaining. In number 16, some of the folks started complaining about Moses and Aaron. Why should we follow them? And the Lord did this. He told Moses and Aaron, each man is to take a censer and put incense in it. 250 censers in all, 250 men and present it before the Lord. You and Aaron are also to present your censers. And so they did that. And here's what happened. I'm gonna make, this, make the story short and say that Moses, and Aaron were on one side and Dathan and Abiram, the people who complained, were on the other side. And the Lord warned the assembly, move back from the tents of these wicked men. Don't touch anything belonging to them or you will be swept away because of all their sin. So they moved away from the tents of Korah and Dathan and Abiram. Those were the three men who had these 250 followers. And guess what happened? The earth split apart. It opened its mouth and swallowed them and their households and all those associated with Korah together with their possessions. They went down alive into the realm of the dead with everything they owned and the earth closed over them and they perished and were gone from the community. Can you imagine witnessing something like that? At all their cries, all the Israelites around them fled shouting, the earth is gonna swallow us too and fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering the incense. It's some story, isn't it? I'm going somewhere. And then in Exodus 32, if you remember, when Moses went up to the mountain, to get the Ten Commandments from the Lord. The people started acting a fool. And what did they do? Aaron was down there with the folks and they were complaining, Aaron, let us make a God who will go before us. We don't know this man, Moses. 
So what do they do? They burn all their gold, all their earrings, all the wealth that God had given them coming out of Egypt. They burned it in a big bonfire and made a golden calf. Well, they did what they wanted to do. They did it their own way, thinking that they were going to go around God to do what they wanted to do. Don't think the story is so far-fetched from us. Don't think the story is so far-fetched from the psalmist talking about people who do what they want to do, who go around God's plan and do what they want to do. And so Moses, of course, comes down. He breaks that set of commandments, commandments because he's so angry at what the people had done. He takes the golden calf. He grinds, he burns it and grinds it into ash, puts it in their water and makes them drink it. Huh. Have you ever reaped the consequences of your decisions? This is an, ex this is an example of Israel reaping the consequences of their decisions. They have to drink. They have to drink the ashes of that golden calf that they made because there is no other water supply. Hmm. So here's where I'm going. What are you trusting God for today? And have you forgotten all he has done? Are you complaining today because you don't feel blessed? Do you think God has forgotten us or forgotten you? Are you like the Hebrews? Are you just weary from worrying today? Are you weary from worrying today? Is the weight of the world on your shoulders about kids, about grandkids or great grandkids or other family? Have you been disobedient? Have your disobedient thoughts driven a wedge between you and your faith in God? Are all of your actions harmonized? to God's essential story of your life. What I'm saying here is, where's your faith? Is your faith in harmony with God's story for your life? See, the problem for us though, is that life is not linear. Just like for the Hebrew people, life was not linear. There was always something always something going on. Life does not flow in a straight line. Life is complicated. It's complicated, y'all, with twists and unexpected turns, just like it was for the Hebrew people, just like it was for the author of this psalm. Life can be so ironic. It's rich at times. It's tragic at times. And sometimes it's very painful, as we all know. In fact, it's easy for us to get lost at times or to stop at a particular point in our story so that the outcome or where God wants to go with us is abandoned, at least for a time or maybe for a lifetime. So what do we do? What do we do with the story of God's miracles? What do we do with the story of the Exodus? How do we read it? How do we understand it? How do we respond to it? We have to keep reminding ourselves who God is 
and that he will keep us on track to finish our story. He will keep us on track to finish our story. We don't have to deviate. We don't have to do it our own way. We don't have to emotionally wander off course. We don't have to physically wander off course or spiritually wander off course. Remember that God is the perfecter of faith in Hebrews 12 and two. This is a great verse in Psalm 138.8. It says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Do you know the Lord will perfect that which concerns you? Do you know that he knows what concerns you today? Do you know that he will bring that to completion today? He will bring it to completion. If not today, if not tomorrow, certainly in the day of Jesus Christ when he returns to make all things right. So what do we have to be? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for our work is not in vain. We have to be loyal. We have to be obedient. We have to be faithful. So in this Hebrew Chronicle today, we learn that really the only person who was faithful was Moses at the time. Moses was faithful. He carried through the work of the Lord. He didn't understand how he was going to deliver God's people. But when God told him what to do, then he saw it. You don't always understand how God is going to deliver you. You don't always understand what he is going to do and how he is going to do it. But God says, stand fast and stand firm and be obedient because I will deliver my people. I will make it right. I will bring it forth so you don't have to walk around with a long face. You don't have to walk around with your shoulders drooping. You can be joyful because your joy is to the praise of our God. When we are joyful, we praise the Lord because we know God is working on our behalf. That's our lesson for today. The Hebrew Chronicles as chronicled by the psalmist. We all have chronicles in our lives. We all have things that we can go through and say, you know what? God did a miracle. God did a miracle for me. God is working for me. He's working on my behalf. I can't turn around now. I can't afford for God to, to give me or to allow the consequences of my bad decisions to enter into my life. The doors of the church are open for our altar call. If you are having trouble Seeing what God is doing in your life. Seeing the miracles that he has performed. We'll pray for you that God would open your eyes. If you want to accept him as Lord and Savior, we can do that as well today. You know, we serve a magnificent God who's able to do above and beyond anything that we can think or imagine, all according to the power that works in each one of us who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Our song today is going to be 
awesome wonder done by J.J. Hairston and Youthful Praise. If you have a prayer request, please put it in the chat. I hope all of you just hung with me. I hope all of you really have taken in the message today. And some of you are going to move forward in a different way today. What a wonder he is asking God to, to reign in us. You know, I don't know how many of you have um, heard about um, Kirk Franklin. Somebody had told me about it and I just went and just kind of read the story and, you know, I'm not saying life is not difficult and that family is not difficult, but, but you know what? All the time we have to ask the Lord to reign in us. And, you know, same for him, same for any of us. We have to really ask the Lord, just reign in me, reign in me. Because when God reigns in you, when he has that control over your spirit, over your life, there is no way that you can come out of yourself with all of that, all of that. And so that's work for Kirk Franklin and the Lord to do. And so, so many of us have work to do on the inside. God has to do work on the inside. And so I just prayed for him and prayed for his family that he would be able to reconcile himself with the Lord. And so we're going to pray today and I just mentioned that because of the song when it says rain in me, and he's an example, a public example of God needing to rain it, to rain in him, R-E-I-G-N, rain in him on some things with his son. And so today we have some prayer requests and we're going to pray. And I would like some prayer. I didn't get a chance to really um put it in the in the chat um, because I was sitting here reading all the prayer requests, but I received an offer for a kidney and, but I'm not first on the list. So it would take, although I'm a match, it would take some time for that kidney to, um, for, for university hospital to, um, to get one of those kidneys. If it's for me, it will be for me, but I still need you all to pray. Um, I've been, I hadn't said anything really to anybody except Dana, because this is like the fifth call that I've received about a kidney. And uh, so far they haven't matched or for one reason or another, the kidney wasn't good or, you know, just things like that. So, you know what, it's God's business. And so I just need for you to pray. Um, just pray for me. If it if God says so, then he will open doors. He will move heaven and earth so that that kidney will come to me at University Hospital. So there, I think there are other hospitals or another hospital who is first on that list. So anyway, just want to say that. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just come before you, God, just thanking you for this sermon today. And God, just uh, asking you, God, to keep us on track, to help us, God, not to complain, to do things that are, that are disobedient, to circumvent your will for our lives. Help us, God, to stay on track, to order our lives, to order our steps, to provide direction, Lord. To, to keep us just from the wickedness of just our sinful acts at times, our sinful thoughts, Lord. And so, God, we're asking you to cleanse us, to cleanse us as only you can, and to continually cleanse us from those things, God, that might cause us, God, to, to, to do what is not pleasing to you. So, Heavenly Father, I pray for Don Slay today. Um, Ricardo's been keeping, keeping 
tabs on him and says that he has a great attitude and appears to be cheerful as much as he's been through. And so, Lord God, we're praying for his complete healing, his complete recovery in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for Rick and God that he continues to check on him. And so just continue to bless him to be able to do that because it's each one of our responsibilities to really check on one another because we are your community, your community uh, that cares and that loves one another as you have loved us. Lord, I pray God for uh, our, our church today. I pray God that we would just continually pray for one another um, and pray for this time that the Lord allows us to worship and fellowship in person. He is going to allow that one day, Lord God. And the prayer is also for me, for my wellness. And, and I thank you for that, Dave, and, and for uh, Minister King, and for our faithfulness in delivering God's word. And I pray for also for Sam, as I continue to pray for him um, almost daily, as he continues to grow in his, in his, his, his trials. And I saw that he lost one of his cats this week. And, you know, just praying for him as it's difficult for us to lose pets, Lord. And so I just um, pray, God, that you would restore him and that you would continue to transform him in the name of Jesus. And that, yes, he would be a more complete follower of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, for Alberta um, as she has had to wait for um, chemo right now. And I, I saw a prayer request, I think it was from Chiquita, asking prayer for her mom. And uh, because she had this last episode, she can't start the same, the same therapy that she was on. She has to start something new and they have to give some time for her body to heal. But we are so thankful, God, that God, you have touched her body. And Lord God, that she has begun that healing process. And God, we pray for this next chemo, God, that you would keep her, God, from, from the effects of it, from any adverse effects of it. Lord God, that you would heal her body. And Lord God, that you would shrink those tumors in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God. We thank you in advance for answering our prayers. And I am so thankful for Amanda's grandpa that the chemo is working on him and those lung nodules that he has are shrinking. He has three more 21 day cycles of treatment. And so we continue to pray for him. We continue to pray God for his MRI results. And God, we're praying that he doesn't have a tumor in the name of Jesus on his brain. God, we are just so grateful to you, God, for blessing him and for keeping him this far in Jesus name, because they didn't think the chemo was going to work, but God, you know, otherwise, and God, you are totally awesome. And so God, we just pray God that you would heal him in Jesus name. Dave asked for prayer that, that God help us not to stray away from him in times of difficulty and to stay near even when we don't understand what he is doing and when he will do it, even when we just don't get him because we won't get him because his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so God, we just continue to pray for that. We continue to pray for Rick, God, as he asked for prayer for his continuing, continuing evolvement in his knowledge of the Lord and obedience to him. And so God, we just pray God for growth for all of your people, God. We thank you, God. We thank you. And God, we are so uh, sorry for complaining at times, for not trusting, for not having full faith at times, for not believing that you have our best interest in your heart, just like you did for the Hebrew people just like you did for the people in the writing of this psalm, just like you do for us. God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we bless your name and we give you praise. 
And Lord God, we pray that as we dismiss this sermon, this, this service, God, that you would keep us. God, that we would go away changed people, that we would be joyous as we give you praise and honor and glory for all the things that you're doing in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all and let everyone say, amen. Amen, everybody. You can unmute yourselves. Or Amanda, you can unmute everyone. I just want to say hello to everyone and thank you for being here and God bless you. And I hope that the sermon was a blessing to you and that, um, that you got it, that you understand that you really got it. And I'm going to see some joyous people trusting God for every single moment. Amen. It's sick again. <laughs> Say it again. I said it, it's sinking in now. It's sinking in. It's sinking mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Sinking in. That's a wonderful thing. I hope that everyone is doing well. Carla, how are you? Good. Really good. 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 Many prayers for you, Marilyn. Thank you so Many much. Going out. Hey, thank thanks you. for a wonderful message, Marilyn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a little bit, a little different, but a reminder. Yeah, we need Hi, Tim. Hello, Pastor. How you doing? Hanging in here, hanging in here, going through the second effects from my second COVID shot, but I'm here. Oh, okay. You having a little fever and stuff or not feeling tired or? Uh, the tiredness. Tiredness. Mm-hmm. Yep. It will pass. Yeah. Amen. But you're but you're done with your series. I'm done. You're done. Praise God for that. Praise Amen. God. And Marcus, how are you doing? Doing well. Good. good. Mary with you? No, she's in uh Iowa right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Well it's good to good to have you on with us. Thank you. Melissa, how are you? Harold, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Good. Oh, good, to, good to have you on today. Oh, thank you. Gwen's here too. Gwen. Gwen. I'm just I'm in the background. Just hanging. <laughs> I am I am I am just so glad to see all of you today and really just so joyful. Can read that? Yes, that was good. Because so, I know God is working it out, whatever it is. Amen. Yes. 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 Well, believe it. Believe it today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Love you guys. I love you all. Take care, Dave. Have a blessed day. I'll have a blessed day. Give Sam a hug. Thank you.